Paula Franz. Welcome to Outside the Box. Welcome to the Purple Chair, my friend. Um, I, I gotta ask you, and let's start here. You're the CEO and founder of Paul LaFrance Design. Um, you know, innovation is your middle name, but I gotta ask you, um, when did um, the door to television open up? How did it all start for you? This just happened out of the blue. You know, I was just doing what I do. I was just being creative and, and you know, like being a little kid running around having fun. You know, I've never been competing against anybody. I haven't been, I haven't even been trying to build a business. I just don't want to be bored, you know. I, as long as I'm doing something creative and I feel like God's involved with it, um, then I'm good. My good friend Mike Sheeran, who's the executive producer of, you know, of the shows, and uh, he sees me and on, just turns it on that morning, you know, wow. just coincidentally. Wow. And he goes, like, I need the TV show. And, you know, we had coffee and then a week later and then just a little while down the road, we started filming Decked Out. You have a mantra that I've read that you tell your staff before they start the next design, and it's to go where no one has gone before. When you look at your life, where is Paul LaFrance going where he hasn't been? Where am I going? Yeah. Man, um, don't care. As long as it's in the center of what God is doing, then it's a roller coaster ride. I mean, if you. Would you get on a roller coaster if, like, would you, you know, would you go on a computer graphic to make sure you know where every turn is and where every up and down is, you know, uh, before you got on it? That kind of ruins the fun, don't you mm -hmm. think? I just want to get on and throw my hands in the air. Mm -hmm. I mean, who has more fun on a roller coaster? Mm -hmm. The guy gripping the bar like grim death, you know, <laughs> planning his escape or, you know, or, or the person throwing their hands in the air. With every creation that you put together in design, um, your heart is to create, I've read that you want to create a space of retreat, relaxation for people. Um, where does Paul LaFrance go? Where do you go to find retreat? Ah, the forest. Mm. This journey for me has been about dying to anything that is my own ambition, my own desires. What does Paul want, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm writing a book right now called About Men in Our Culture, which, mm -hmm. is, which is called I Don't Want to Be an Adult Anymore. And the premise of that book is nobody that has spent any time thinking, spending the majority of time thinking about you and where and, and your rights and your needs and what you deserve is ever happy. They're not. None of them are. Find me one person that is that is spending their time focusing on building their castle or their identity or their status that it really is happy. I can't see it. The happiest people in the world are the ones that are like. I wake up with purpose every day because what I'm doing is impacting other people. Your Twitter page boasts a very unique title, uh, word rather, it's La Francify, the definition the act of creating wow and the art of making simple things profound and profound things simple. When I read this I had to ask you, you know, how does God create wow moments for you in your life and how has he brought depth to what is simple and profound for you? Oh, the wow moments are far too many to count. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think one of the elements, the, the minute I left the adult world and stopped, you know, when, when God said to me, guess what, Paul, you're not under my report card. You know, <sighs> changed everything. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to think I wasn't worthy of the calling that he had for me and, and uh, that he chose the wrong guy, you know. I've been hearing these, these words spoken over me since I was a little kid, you know, about me being this leader and this voice, and, and, and I would just be like, man, you've got the wrong guy, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm a mess. And, you know, one, there was one day, one massive wow moment was another walk in the forest. Spent a lot of time there. <laughs> and, and I had just, I had gone into the forest that day to disqualify myself. I walked in out there that day to be like, all right, you know what, I'm tired of trying to pretend that I'm this man that, that, I, that, I, that you say I am, because I don't feel like I am. On that day, I walked out into the forest to say, I have, I have all of these things in my heart that are just like awful. It's like black tar. Mm -hmm. So I'm done. I disqualify myself. I still love you, but I'm removing this pressure for me because I don't think I can measure up. <laughs> and I literally, you know, turned around and it, like an open vision, totally like a movie screen dropped down from the sky. 
you know, not the first time or last time that's happened. And he, and I, I literally saw Jesus standing there, and there was this crowd of witnesses, and I was like, whoa, what's this? And he says, Paul, today is the day that I choose you. Will you say yes? And I was like, dude, did you not hear what I just said? Mm -hmm. I just admitted to you all the things in my heart. Are you mad? Mm -hmm. And he was like, every other time that you have said yes to me, you actually thought you yourself had something to offer me. But today, I am asking you, when you know definitively that you don't have what it takes. This is not about your talent or your abilities or what you can offer me. It is about whether or not you will say yes to me when you know that in and of yourself, you got nothing. Mm -hmm. My friend, Paul LaFrance, you're always welcome here on the Purple Chair, my friend. Thank you for joining us. Amen. Really man, appreciate it. Is you, my, it's my pleasure, man. <laughs> Thanks so much.